What is going on guys? So today we are going back to the basics, learning the core fundamentals of ESO. What is the best weapon traits for PvP? This is a very basic and simple question, but requires a more complicated and well thought out answer. I'll try my best to explain almost every possible scenario and what the best trait is for that certain spec and how to utilize it effectively. But at the end of the day, there are just staple weapon traits you must use on your build to be quote unquote viable to get every ounce of damage, healing or mitigation possible on a setup. For simplicity's sake, I will be putting them on a tier list so it's easier for you guys to understand what are objectively the best, but any trait can be used depending on your build and what you're really trying to achieve with it. But before we get started, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe, it's free, and you never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to smash the like button. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we really deep dive into ranking these, there's actually a few golden rules I think you guys have to understand. Uh, about these weapon traits and, and what type of weapons you use them on and all that sort of thing. So the first one is going to be one-handed weapons are half of the value of the traits of two-handed weapons. So for example, we have sharpen here that gives 1,638 physical and spell penetration. And then on the 2H weapon, we have 3,276. So it's half the value. Now there are a few extraneous situations here that actually will impact the weapon traits rank. So for example, Nernhoned on a 1H mace has 15% increase of, of the weapon damage for a 2h their own has a 15 percent increase of this weapon damage so this means that the trait value on nerd on the 1h and the 2h are the same which is very very big and, and we'll go into all this later uh, also we have infuse infuse has the same increases the enchantment effect by 30 percent for the 1h and for the 2h right here as well but the big difference is is infuse on the one handed weapons have half of the value of the enchant so if you look here 1506 physical damage on the 1h and then for the 2h we have 3013 uh, physical damage so enchants and traits on one handed weapons and two handed weapons are halved on the 1h weapons typically other than nernhoned and infused but infused is still kind of affected by the one handed weapons but every other trait regardless of what it is is going to be halved on the one-handed weapons versus the 2h and also one more thing this is very important and i think a lot of people maybe not understand this exactly if you are wanting to run dual wield for example make sure your main hand dual wield weapon is nernhund if you want to run nernhund that is you can run sharpen whatever you want to run we're not even in the ranking system yet but if you want to run nernhund to increase your weapon to spell damage make sure your main hand is nernhund for whatever reason, if you were to Nern Hone your offhand, you'd get less value. I'll show you really fast. So Nern Hone main hand and decisive offhands. So our weapon damage here on my dual wheel bar is uh, 33.99. Okay, now if we just change this, all we do is put the Nern Hone on our offhand and decisive on our main hand. Now we have 32.39, so we have less damage Th just swapping the traits so this is very important i really want you guys to understand this make sure if you ever use nernhund it's on your main hand so now that we got those golden rules out of the way we can now rank these weapon traits so we're going to start off with sharpened by far in my opinion sharpened is s tier uh, it's widely utilized on a lot of classes regardless uh, of your spec it's basically like a staple that you will use on your build uh, sharpened is, is probably the best for your offensive damage depending on what you're using now for two handed weapons sharpen is just great one-handed weapons they're a little bit different to some degree but honestly sharpen is just a really strong go-to weapon trait basically what it does is resistances are subtractive so whatever my physical penetration or spell penetration is it basically subtracts from their armor value so this means that if i have 20,000 penetration and they have and they have 20,000 armor i basically mitigate all of their resistances with just my penetration now there are other factors you know talking about vulnerabilities and stuff like that or, or protections but that's just going to get a little bit too complicated for this video i did a whole video going over mitigation explain critical resistance if you guys are interested in that video i'll link it down in the description below so in essence sharpen is probably the best weapon trait for your offensive stat whether you're magicka or stamina it just gives you a good amount of damage increase against your opponent as people really stack a lot of mitigation especially in open world pvp people try to be really tanky so you definitely want to mitigate the resistances as much as you can passively with your weapon traits. So next we have Charged. Now this trait received a massive buff in the Deadlands DLC. Very, very good now. 
very good, but I have to put this on the A tier. Now for a few different specs and classes, it may be S tier, particularly on the Magic of Dragonite. But let's go into what a status effect is. I think it's very crucial to understand how this trait works. So the status effects are burning, chilled, concussed, poison, diseased, hemorrhaging, sundered, and overcharged. Now burning is gonna proc off of flame damage, chilled is gonna proc off of ice damage, concussed is gonna proc off of shock damage, poisoned off of poison, and disease obviously off diseased. Now a few new status effects that were introduced, I think in update 30, I can't remember exactly, but there's something called hemorrhaging, sundered, and overcharged. Hemorrhaging is proc off of bleed damage, sundered is proc off of physical damage, and overcharged is proc proc off of magic damage. Now there's several different types of skills and abilities that deal all these types of things. So I think it's very important. I mean, at least look on the Magden. So for example, the overcharged, we have a lot of, of magic damage. Okay. So we have deep fissure. Okay. And then we have, you know, the Arctic blast, which is frost damage. We have, you know, the Dawnbreaker on here. So this procs physical damage. So if we were to run the charge trait, we would increase the chances to proc the status effect by 240% for the one-handed weapon. Again, remember the two-handed weapons are doubled or 480% for the two-handed weapon. Now, in my opinion, I think running charge on a two-handed weapon is kind of overkill or I, I, I wouldn't personally use it. I think it's good. This is kind of why it's A tier. It's because it's not like going to be like a widely utilized thing. But if you're going to be using dual wheel with something like sharpened charged, or we're going to here in a little bit Nernhorn charged, I think this could have a lot of value because status effects they are kind of underrated to some degree, mainly like the Sundered, which is very strong. It reduces the resistances by about 3000. Concuss gives a minor vulnerability, increasing your, basically your target's damage taken by 5%. You also have other ones like Burning, which is adds a little bit of extra dot, which is, I think is very important for the DK because the more stats effects you proc on the enemy, which was changed in update 32, that you can get more resource sustain based on your uh, stats effects proc. So poison and burning is going to be very strong on the magic DK because you're going to get magicka and stamina when you proc those. Now there is a cooldown, but having a nern honed or sharpened in a charge on a magic DK, I think will have a lot of value. All right. So next we have the precise trait. Now, in my opinion, precise has lots of allure over time and is really just a trait that if you're just trying out a build is okay to run. So that could be best in spot, but it could be fine, I guess. Precise is honestly, in my opinion, a B tier trait because like crit chance has been nerfed over time and all it is is a chance to deal like critical either damage or healing. It's not a guarantee, unlike sharpened or unlike charge. I mean, I guess charge is, is a chance to apply the status effects, but it's so high inherently as is, it's, it's been buffed. Uh, charge is a lot better than precise is. So like sh sharpened, for example, this is a guaranteed basically 2% damage uh, increase on your target. Well, precise is a random chance to deal critical damage, which could be 50%, but if they have M pin, it's going to produce that. I think precise could be fine, but at that point, you may as well run something like daggers or to give you some critical chance uh, with the dual twin blade and blunt because you gain 812 critical chance. Precise is fine. I just don't see a lot of value because I'd rather have either Nurn honed or sharpened over precise, at least in my opinion. And now it just depends on your spec. Now, if you're trying to utilize a high crit spec, then obviously precise could be very good, but at least in my opinion right now, as it sets, precise is one of the worst, if not the worst trait uh, for me, in my opinion. All right, so next we have infuse. Now, so this increases the weapon enchant effect by 30% and reduces the cooldown by 50%. So this trait has been good for a quite a long time, but ever since, you know, the changes to the CP system, uh, in damage mitigation is a lot harder now to get, you know, a little bit of, you know, survivability. Infuse has kind of lost its value because before you'd be kind of tanky with your CP system. So you could go, you know, a little bit more damage here and run an infuse, you know, damage trait, like, you know, weapon and spell damage on your back bar. Now it's really hard to do that as you need something more like defending or powered uh, to give you a little bit more healing potential or something like that. So infuse is, is kind of compared to those in that aspect but also you can utilize this offensively with a uh, enchant. Now enchants have been gutted pretty much. Uh, they used to deal like five or six K damage with infuse. Now they deal, you know, a lot less uh, like enchants used to scale up with your CP and now it doesn't. 
So this is where, uh, in my opinion, Infuse lost a lot of its value uh, over time, and it's just not the best. I, I would give it like a solid A tier. It's better than Precise, in my opinion, but it's still not as good. It's, it could be utilized for both offense and defense. The only way I would use Infused, at least in my opinion, is, is to use this with a weapon and spell damage enchant on my back bar. But at that point, I would rather have more healing power or a little bit more mitigation with defending or powered. But ultimately, I think it's a solid, decent A tier aspect. I would not use this one handed. I would only use this in a two handed type of weapon, either a bow or a resto for my back bar or a staff on the front bar. That's just my personal opinion. That's how I would use the infused trait. Next, we got good old defending. Now, this is just a solid staple. Um, it gives you 2% mitigation on your back bar. It's basically the opposite of sharpened. Um, but I still don't use this as much as maybe powered. Uh, but we'll go into that here in a minute. Defending is good. Uh, I think it's a solid S tier. I personally don't use it as much as, as a lot of other people may. But defending it is fine. You know, it gives you mitigation. Like classes that will utilize this the most are probably like Magsork as they don't have a lot of healing potential. So they use a lot of their mitigation through resistances and, you know, with shield stacking. So resistances stacking on, on the Sork is much better. If you, use, if you utilize damage shields, resistances are a lot better as you can reduce your damage taken on those damage shields, making you that much more tanky. While powered, on the other hand, wouldn't give you mitigation on your damage shield it would only increase your healing potential so if you're going for more damage shield type of spec i think defending could be very good but if you're going for more of a healing type of build i think power is definitely the better option but defending is definitely an s tier trait in my opinion next we have decisive now ultimately decisive is a b tier trait i think it could be a tier for certain specs just like the charge okay dk's utilize status effects and also DKs utilize ultimate regeneration. So this is where I would see the value in decisive is building an ult gen spec. So for example, we have a 55% chance to gain one additional ultimate whenever we gain ultimate. So if you have blood spawn, major heroism, minor heroism, you have a lot of chances to proc ultimate, but at the value and at what cost are you gonna be doing that? Because decisive in my opinion is a back bar trait. So if you're gonna utilize decisive, uh, you're, you're gonna have a one-handed shield back there or you're gonna have a resto so a 27 27.5% on a 1h or a 55% chance on a 2h now How often are you gonna be on that bar to receive the decisive buff is the real question Because you know utilizing you know blood spawn and danger trickery and all that stuff to give you ultimate regen is gonna be very fast ult gen, but are you gonna be able to be on that bar enough to utilize it because you can't go offensive if you're on your back bar so this is why i see the, the catch 22 as you can push out more ultimate yes which could inherently increase your sustain but at what cost are you going to be dropping this for defending or or even powered i just don't see um value in, in it as much for other classes maybe for the dk or the warden specifically but not for really anything else in my opinion definitely not for stamina builds powered or defending is definitely a lot better so now we have good old Nernhoned. This is a again a staple S tier in my opinion. So Nernhoned, remember, is that weird one that has the same value on 2H weapons or 1H weapons. So this means that you're getting more value on a 1H th than you would be a 2H because now you have a secondary trait you can utilize with Nernhoned. So this is where, in my opinion, dual wield specs outperform two-handed types of, of specs because I can go a Nernhoned main hand like I was explaining earlier, and then I can go a charged offhand for like a magic DK. I can go even a sharpened offhand to give me a little bit more penetration. And at that point, I have more value than using, for example, so like a Nern Honed and Sharpened is gonna give me 1638 penetration. At that point, I have more damage than a Sharpened Maul would because I'm gonna have more weapon damage from my 1H mace, and I'm gonna have a little bit less penetration, you know, a little bit half, but I'm gonna have overall more damage. Now, Nernhoned, in my opinion, is not gonna be utilized on the 2H as much. It still is good, don't get me wrong. But here recently, I've been really stacking a lot of penetration on my specs, trying to get as much pin as possible. As it's a secondary stat, in my opinion, typically when you build your weapon damage from your gear sets, so for example, like Titanborn, Clever Alchemist, you know, that sort of thing, that's where you're gonna utilize a lot of your damage. You can run like 
you know, Essence Thief with, you know, Powerful Assault, Clever Alk, and the Magma Incarnate, right? You know, that's where you want to get your weapon damage. You don't want to get your weapon damage from your, you know, your traits exactly. You know, obviously for the duel, it is a little bit different, but you typically want to go with Sharpened Maul if you're going to run a 2 H weapon. But if you're using dual wield, we're still using maces, but we're going to be gaining a little bit more damage with Nernhound, giving us a little bit more in that regard. Also, dual wield passives have more viability with the dual wield expert giving us six percent more weapon damage on our offhand so this makes do we even have more base tooltip weapon and spell damage than a two-handed weapon would so ultimately nerd Hound, in my opinion is utilized on a dual wield spec more than a 2h uh type of spec so i would not use a staff of nerd Hound. i would not even back bar nerd Hound, as i don't think it's more valuable than using something like powered or defending is and finally, we have power. This is probably the best back bar trait, in my opinion, as I utilize this on a lot of specs, either magical or stamina. Um, basically, it just increases your healing done. You know, it's very important, I think, to have some decent healing. So for two H's, we have 9% healing done. And for one H's, we have 4.5%, so it's obviously half. Now, this is a back bar trait, as you're going to utilize this on your defensive bar, where your healing's at. You know, typically, you know, for stamina builds, it's going to be where your vigor is. Uh, you know, it's going to be... I mean, even sometimes where your rally is, uh, if you're going to back a 2 each weapon, it's going to be where your coag or burst heal is, you know, with, with Breath of Life or with coagulating blood, Arctic Blast, you know, for a warden and that sort of thing. That's where you're going to utilize the power trait. If you don't have enough healing, like for example, the Magsork, obviously defending is your best option, but I just utilize powered. I just like to have more healing potential because over time, I feel like powered if I'm taking a lot of pressure, I would rather increase my healing because I'm already utilizing Vampire. So if I have more mitigation, it's going to be multiplicative, making it not as valuable. But it really just depends on really what you're going for, honestly. You know, it's just a preference based to some extent. The only downside with Powered is as soon as I swap bars from my back bar to my front bar, the Powered trait falls off. While the Defending trait, for example, is pretty much always active when I'm on that bar. And then when I swap bars, it goes off. So the healing potential will go down once i swap bars with powered but it'll pretty much stay the same with defending but as soon as i swap bars with defending i gain that mitigation but as soon as i swap bars with powered if i'm not healing myself i'm not gaining the extra percent percentage of healing so that's really the downsides it's really preference based defending and powered are probably neck and neck to some degree in most theories defending is probably the better option but it's just a really a feel base uh how i personally play um, because stats only get you so far, you know, defending will give you a bigger, you know, resistance, making you look a lot tankier. When in reality, sometimes if you hit a critical heal with powered, it can be very beefy and it can honestly save your life over defending. But in most scenarios, I would say defending is probably your better option. It just depends on, again, personal preference, though, on what you prefer. So that is pretty much all for the video, guys. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys would adjust and change differently for this tier list. Regardless, I hope this will help you in your endeavors of making your own builds. If you guys have no clue where to start and you guys are lost, I've been doing a lot of beginner guides on how to actually make builds, what your stats should look like, and much more. If you guys are interested in that, then check out my PvP guides playlist. But that is it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.